Amen. Amen. As I begin to study this word, I've been studying this word for about two weeks. As I begin to study this word, God has showed me that uh, we have been placed behind the enemy's lines. We've been placed in a unique position where we have found ourselves dropped in in the midst of an uh, uh, unrighteous world, dropped in in the midst of uh, alcohol addiction and uh, a drug addiction, dropped in in environments where uh, lack and, and sickness and disease. We've been dropped in there to be able to fight against the enemy on his own grounds. That's a tough job that God has called us to do. But he put us behind enemy lines. He has prepared us to be able to fight in this unjust world. He prepared us to be in position to go against the enemy, to be able to fight and be able to fight strong. It's a unique position that you've been called to be a spy, to spy against the devil, to be able to kill him and his imps. God has told you, he, he raised you up. I feel the anointing already. And he has raised you up to go and break the ties off of your family, to break uh, his stronghold off of your children, to break the stronghold off of your neighborhood, to take away uh, the dirt, the, the, to break down the meth houses, to break down the crack houses, to break down the liquor stores, to do what God had called you to do. He put you on that block. He put you on that wall. He needs you on that wall. God had called you to do it. You are now the law and order in your neighborhood. You are now the uh, you are the God's anointed chosen one to do what God calls you to do. You are not a, a vigilante for the law. You are a vigilante for God. That's completely different. I'm not telling you to go break down no. I'm not telling you to go break down no crack houses. I'm telling you to be praying against them. Go with me to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians, chapter six, and say, God. I'm behind enemy lines. Thank you for putting me there. Because I know my job. Tell your neighbor, I'm behind enemy lines. Can I, can I, I I'm, I'm going to give you Ephesians 6, but I'm going to prove it biblically. Can I prove it to you biblically? So y'all some smart folk. And sometimes smart folk need to see the word. And, and God had put you uh, behind enemy lines on purpose because uh, he wanted to be a light amongst the darkness. Sometimes you have to recognize that uh, even in war, you need somebody coming from behind. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of people on the front, right? But while the front is fighting, uh, y'all go catch this in a minute. While the front is fighting each other, here comes the people from behind. Um, <laughs> so Ephesians 6, when you got to say amen. Ephesians chapter 6. I will not be before you long, but I, what I have is fun and powerful. Is that okay? Ephesians chapter 6 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, I'm in verse 12, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto the whole armor of God, that you may be with able to stand in the evil day, having done all to stand. How many people know they're in the evil day? How many know that there is evil all around us? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the good thing about this day and age is that um, what was once hidden has now come to light. If you don't know that by now, you can, you, you, it is there, you can see it. Uh, the, the issues uh, have really made, it's bubbled up to the top, right? It, it, it makes it easy for us to cream it off and start, start clean. Amen. It's time for us to pray again in the United States. It's time for us to be uh, uh, taking fast for the United States. It's time for us to take fast for the world. Why? Because evil is present all the way around us. So it says put on your armor. How many people know you got to put on your armor? Put it on. Let's put it on. Let's just put it on. I'm, I got my helmet on. I got my, my breastplate of righteousness. Don't you know my breastplate is in the front and it also protects my back? Don't, uh, people don't know that, but I'm telling you that I got my armor on. Look at your neighbors. I got my armor on. Uh, for lack of a, a, a problem, we're going to go and say, it says, standing therefore having the loins girded about in truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, have your feet shy with the preparation of the gospel of peace. How many people know where you walk, peace going to go? That's why it's okay for you to be behind enemy lines, because when you're behind enemy lines, they don't even notice you because peace is walking with you. 
<laughs> when you begin to share the gospel, you turn in one enemy at a time to God's uh, love and kindness. <laughs> what I'm saying is you walking with the gospel. When, the, when you walking with the gospel, that means you got the cross with you. When you walking with the gospel, that means you got the healing with you. When you walking with the gospel, that means you got the resurrection with you. You have uh, the gospel of God walking with you. That gives you peace, baby. I don't know about you, but that's peace that passes all understanding. <laughs> when you could be behind enemy lines and you still got peace. Look to neighbor and say, I got peace. I got peace. If, if, if you can't tell your neighbor you got peace, you come up here, we lay hands on you right now. Say, I got peace. Say, I got peace. Even though I'm behind enemy lines. How many people, uh, let me just, just show of hands, how many people uh, have some debts they need to get rid of? Debts, debts, debts. Yeah. I'm going to raise my hand. I still believe that uh, I get rid of my car payment. That would be good. Get rid of my house payment. That would be good, right? I got some debts I want to get rid of. They're not crucial to me, but if I can get rid of them, amen, it would be a blessing, right? The Lord wants us to live without debt. How many people know that? Yeah, uh, uh, right? Uh, I, I'm behind uh, the enemy lines when it comes to the finances, amen? Yeah. But God's getting ready to take it back. Say, take it back. How many of you know that God, uh, God does not want you under, underneath water in debt? If you're underneath water in debt, you are behind the enemy's lines. Look to Nathan, I'm getting out. I'm getting out. I'm fighting my, uh, how many How many people know you can fight your way out of debt? I'm fighting with the enemy. I'm praying on the floor. I'm scraping carpet with my mouth. I'm doing whatever God called me to do because I am truly uh, uh, fighting the enemy in debt. Now, I be, this is how I'm behind enemy lines. I begin to get behind enemy lines, and I begin to pray. Just like they put uh, Daniel in the lion's den. He didn't care because no lion was about to touch him, even though he was behind enemy lines, even though he was in prison, even though he was encamped. There's a place where you can pray. I can pray right now. God will remove my debts. God will remove my, uh, uh, will bring my lack away. He'll bring me prosperity. He'll bring me profitability. He'll do what God called me to do. In the midst of my situation, in the midst of my circumstance, when I'm behind enemy lines, uh, when I got the gospel of peace on me, uh, when I'm walking with the preparation of the word, uh, when I got the breastplate of righteousness, uh, when I'm sitting here, I'm behind enemy lines. Uh, when I know God's got my back, it doesn't matter where I am. Uh, when I'm going through a fight, uh, when I'm going through a battle, uh, when I'm woken up in the middle of the night, because the spirit is attacking me. I know that I got God. I know that I got peace. I know that I got joy because I'm behind enemy lines and I'm okay with that. If you weren't called to, if this church weren't called to collide against darkness, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be doing it. But God called us to it. That's why when the, when the demons try to come up in here, we cut their heads off. We got Peters. We got John, James. We got John. I got enough Peters in here that carry guns and, and swords that do what God called them to do. Ain't no devil and no devil in hell coming up in here. How many, how many people know that uh, we like Switzerland? When you come here, you got sanctuary, baby. There's peace. You might be at war out there, but if you need three hours of peace, here you come. Uh, you come on Wednesday and Sunday and get you some peace. You can walk in here and get you some, get you some regirded, get your uniform clean, get your armor sharpened, get, get everything done, get uh, any holes in your armor, get replaced. Why? Because you get ready to go back out to war. Ah. Uh, I just, can I just preach for a moment? I just feel like preaching. And sometimes I got to teach y'all, but I feel what God is getting ready to do. God is getting ready to get y'all all armored up. Everybody's going to leave out here ready to go to battle, knowing that you're behind enemy lines. You might be behind enemy lines on your job. You might be surrounded by different people, but you know that God's got your back. God's going to restore you. God's going to heal you. God's going to make a difference, so it don't matter. You might be behind enemy lines in your body. Your, your body may be sick, but God has got you. Say, God's got me. Say, I'm behind enemy lines. And that's okay for now. Because God's going to use me to destroy the enemy. Come on, let's keep reading. Let's keep reading. Y'all be seated. I feel it. I feel it. Anybody feel what I'm feeling? I mean, it, 
It says, above all, taking the shield of how many people got the shield of faith with them? That the, uh, we learned this morning that faith was a, a, a Philemon 1 and 6. I, I got to add that to my message today because that was just so powerful. Philemon 1 and 6. If you was in this morning, you get a double dose. Great job, Monica. Phil, uh, Philemon 1 and 6. The communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you. <laughs> Cry by Christ Jesus. <laughs> the, the Philemon 1 and 6 says, if you begin to speak faith, then your faith becomes effectual because Jesus who's in you. <laughs> your faith becomes effectual because the Holy Spirit is using you. Your faith becomes effectual because God has chosen you to speak it. Sometimes you got to recognize you've been chosen to speak these words. You've been chosen to prophesy to your family. You've been chosen to tell your, your children that they're going to be healed. You've been chosen to say you're never going to have lack. You've been chosen to say whatever that child wants, she's going to get because God has promised it to her. Well, you've been chosen to prophesy to your house. You've been chosen to prophesy to your car. You've been chosen to prophesy to your body. God has put you up because your communication is out of your mouth and you it comes with faith. Put up your shield, baby. Put up your shield knowing that you're behind enemy lines. Sometimes you got to have a shield because when you're behind enemy lines, you got to have the faith of God to put it up. Faith, 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 faith. Faith is so powerful to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. That's what I'm talking about. When you speak faith, the enemy's throwing you sickness and disease. Oh, no, I'm not sick, bit devil. Uh, when you speak faith, say, no, nah, you can't get me. I might be here, but you can't get me. When you speak faith, no, debt can't have me. When you speak faith, you say, lack can't have me. When you speak faith, my children are saved, and the devil can't have you. When you speak faith, that's what it says. Is you can quench the fiery darts of the wicked. I don't care how many darts he's sending at my way. I have faith. Say, I got faith. My shield is strong. How many people say you want, say your shield is strong? I just felt that we have to be a, a, obedient to what I'm hearing in the spirit. Stand up and just put up your shield. Just know my shield is strong. Yeah, you, you see that you got to have a, a shield only going to hold with one hand because you got to have a sword and the other. Y'all not talking to me. <laughs> you got to you got to know how to war, baby. And, and war means you got to be prepared. <laughs> you got to have that shield up in one hand and you got to have that sword in the other. Uh, I'm left handed, so I'm going to have my shield up in my right hand, the right hand of righteousness. <laughs> and I'm left handed, so I'm going to grab that sword with my left hand and I'm going to cut the devil's head off. <laughs> I'm going to cut the spirit's head. Let's cut some debt. Let's cut some lack. Let's cut some sickness. Let's cut some disease. Uh, let's cut some uh, uh, unforgiveness. Uh, y'all didn't know y'all was behind that enemy line, did you? You didn't know you were holding on to unforgiveness. You need to cut that devil off. You didn't know that you was under their pride. You need to cut that devil off. Uh, this sword too heavy. <laughs> oh! This is this one of these uh, broad swords. You need two hands for this. But you need to cut. Say cut. You got to understand that the, the, the enemy is against you, and you need to cut him before he come cut you. How many people know that words can cut? <laughs> How many people know that when the, when the enemy says some words, there's some, some words that cut you like an enemy, and, and it hurts you? And the worst thing is it don't matter if it come from outside. <laughs> but when it come from inside the family, <laughs> when it come from inside the house, that's when the words are cutting. That's when you need to call the enemy <laughs> and say, enemy. I'm going to cut you. And you let them know ahead of time, I got you, devil. I see you trying to attack my wife. I see you trying to attack my husband. I see you trying to attack my children. But I'm not going to let it happen. I got you, God. I got you, devil. God's got my back. He gave me the spirit. He gave me the shield. I'm quenching your fiery darts. Even when it comes from family, I'm quenching the fiery darts of unforgiveness. I'm quenching the fiery darts of hurt. I'm quenching the fiery darts of guilt. I'm quenching the fiery darts of pain. I'm quenching the uh, Y'all not talking to me. You need to be quenching all your fiery darts. Uh, whatever's coming against you, you need to quench it. You need to quench it. You need to quench it. Uh, let's get back to the feet. Y'all be seated. That's why you ain't going to be too you long. Y'all learn anything? And, uh, and above all, take the shield of faith where you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation. I'm saved. Why do you think God put it on the helmet? Protect 
your mind. Your mind got to be saved. Your mind got to be free. Now, you know what? You know what challenges dogs, right? Dogs, uh, they have those hidden barriers that they put uh, in the in the ground that keep uh, dogs uh, bound, right? They let the dogs run free. If you take the collar off after uh, after a year of training that dog, and that collar doesn't buzz anymore, the dog still won't move off of that boundary. Why? Because they mind not free. I say that to us. The devil got us like dogs. We are free. We've been free. But we choose not to be free because we've still been bound in our mind. So that's why you got to have a helmet of salvation on because it breaks the, 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 the tie of the enemy. <laughs> Even though you've been, you, you, uh, this is good. I, I just heard this in the spirit. How many people have seen all these uh, television shows when a, when a cop goes undercover? Right? And, and, and when they stay under there too long. They stop forgetting they behind enemy lines. They stop forgetting that they are police officers and start becoming uh, what they're supposed to be uh, undercover for. They've, they've been bound up in their mind. That's why you have to put on the helmet of salvation because it breaks the curse of the enemy. It, it, even though you're behind enemy lines, it breaks off that you're not like them. I might, I might be in this world, but I'm not of the, oh, y'all not talking to me. Uh, I'm not of this world. I've been chosen for this role. I've been taking this responsibility. Why? Because I'm strong enough. I'm old enough. I'm, I'm bold enough. My word is powerful enough to defeat the devil. If I don't believe it, if it wasn't, I would not be so. That's what God said. God said, if it wasn't the case, I wouldn't be able to leave you, but I leave you with a comforter. Somebody that give you a check in your spirit when you out of line. I got a little more text. Come on, let's get a little more text. It says, praying always. See, this is the most important thing. We forget this. We have our sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, but we always forget to pray. You know how many people go to war and never pray? And that's a bad example. Part of your armor is your prayer, baby. You got to pray covering for your family. You Because let me tell you, they may not be able to get to you, but they're going to find the weakest link in your family. They may not be able to get to you, but they can get to your husband. They can get to your spouse. They can get to your children. They can get to anybody that could affect your working for the kingdom. They know you behind the lines. Matter of fact, they expect you to be there. That's what's so powerful about this text. Is God expects you to be here, but the devil knows you there. Why you think the devil always? Uh, why you think kings always had a a a a a, a food taster? Uh, Y'all gonna catch that in a minute. Why you think kings always got somebody tasting their food? Because there's somebody behind the enemy lines. There's always a spy in the camp. God God put you there on purpose, but the enemy knows you there. What he does, but what God does, he said, put, I put prayer on you, so that the enemy can't touch you. Like them three Hebrew boys. <laughs> three Hebrew boys, uh, 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 even if he don't show up, even if God don't show up, I'm not going to serve you. I, I, they was behind enemy lines and was bold enough to say, I'm, devil, you can do whatever you want to me. I'm not going to serve you. Though they slay me, Job, Job said, yet will I serve him. What he's saying is no matter what I'm going through, no matter where I'm at, no matter what the, the devil try to throw at me, I'm still not going to serve you. I'm not going to turn my life around and serve you. I'm serving God, and even though I'm behind enemy lines, God called me to. Why do you think Daniel didn't take care that they threw him in the lion's den? Why? Because no lion was going to touch him. We have to be bold enough to serve God even in the midst of, of a godless world. See, I'm behind enemy lines. And I was meant to be there. Point number one. Let's go. Can I prove it to you? I told you I was going to prove it to you. John 17. John 17, he says, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and saying, Father, he was praying for us. How many people know he's praying for us? You need to pray. If you don't know anything today, when you're behind enemy lines, you need to pray. That's point number two. When you're behind enemy lines, you need to pray. 
Point number one is we was meant to be there. Point number two, we need to pray. But I'm proving this in both right here. Say, say prove it, God. Prove it, God. Said these words spoke Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven, saying, Father, the hour has come, glorify the Son, that the Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they may know the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. He's talking about himself, by the way. God is talking about himself in the third person. Why is it the third person? Because it's the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, third person, three, three people. So he's speaking to himself in third person. Sometimes you need to tell them, de them devils in you to get out. Oh, y'all go catch that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. uh, just go catch that. It, it walked right past you. I let it walk right past you, but I want to hit it again. It says sometimes you need to speak to yourself in third person. Devil, get out of me. Lack, get out of me. Yeah, you, if you're not strong enough to tell your own spirit to get out your pocket, y'all know, know what I'm saying? I need to get out my own pocket. Yeah, you know, we all got a little devil in us, right? I mean, I, I know I don't. I'm working on mine, but I got, sometimes I got an electronics demon that try to reap up on and grab me. Yeah. What does it say? I remember the, addic the addiction commercials all saying, and knowing is first is the knowing is half the battle, right? Uh, 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 I, it try and jump on me. I, I, I'm like a, a early adopter, right? If it come out, I want it. So I got to I got to tell myself to get out of my pocket. <laughs> right, yeah, thank God for points. Points help my pocket go good because I've earned them, so I can spend them and they don't cost me nothing. I got a new TV, points. I had a, a Best Buy gift card, get a new watch. But the list could go on and on and on if I, get, if I don't learn to get out of my pocket. Amen? Anybody, 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 any men know what I'm talking about? I know, I'm just, I'm just, what it say? Tell the truth, shame the devil, that's me. Huh? Women, I'm, I'm not leaving y'all alone. Y'all need to get out your own pockets too. Let me tell you, the 100th pair of shoe was not, was not crucial, just like the 99th wasn't. But every good pair of shoe, but then you start thinking, man, I got an outfit that, just one outfit that goes with one, y'all not talking to me, one outfit for each pair of shoes that you got in your, in, in your closet. When your shoe rack is bigger than your closet, you got a problem. Y'all trying to compete with Imelda Marcos from... Amelda Marcos was the, uh, she was the first lady of Philippines. She had 2,000 pairs of shoes. I bet you it would only take me three people in this church to get to 250 pairs of shoes. Yeah. I just got to pick the right three people. That's all it needs. Yeah. If you go to the mall and you have no plans on shopping, but you come home with eight pairs of shoes, you got a problem. Women, get out your pocket. Yeah. Uh, we getting better. One, let me just tell you, man, we, we, getting, we done got better. Because when, once the shoes hit us magical number 199, uh, us, us men, we start saying, wait a minute. <laughs> that, that crossed a bridge, a barrier that I don't want to go. If it is 199 or less, we still think about it. But if it's once some sneakers get 199, you say 259, oh, no, you lost me there. I'll wait till they become the, I'll, be, I'll wait for them to become the old model. Then I'll go get them. Get to the Nike outlet when they're 59. They may be eight years old, but I don't care. They good on my feet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure. I used to love when Deacon Harris was working at the, G, at, at the, at the KU because I get some Jayhawk gear all the time. And they, it was crisp, too. 
He used to get the, the employee discount. That was nice. Praise the Lord for the for Kansas Athletics. Amen. They did us well. Uh, I just wanted God to give us a line back to that. Without you having to work there, they just give me a line back to. <laughs> I want in, intravenous. I want sneakers intravenously, new polos intravenously. Uh, y'all go get that in a minute. That shows my addiction. I'm being healed though. <laughs> yeah, I got to. I got to talk about myself first. Y'all, y'all know I'm a talk. I, I'm talking about me, right? I'm not talking about y'all. Y'all all good. Nobody buys shoes. Nobody buying electronics. Nobody. Uh, y'all know. Y'all TV is the old model. Still get the big box on the back, right? No, y'all, y'all good. Let, let, let me. So, <clears throat> Jessica trying to embarrass herself, but she was the one that went shopping with us and wasn't buying a TV, but bought the but bought the rest of the store. I, her, she almost needed two two carts. I was like, Dad, what are you buying now? I, we lost in the store. Oh, I'm not. I, am I? Wait, who was with me? Uh, who was with me that day? Y'all with me that day? Who was with me that day? Do you, am, I, am, I, am I telling the truth? Jessica had more stuff than everybody else. She got that anointing. Here we go. Verse 15. You got it? 17, 15. I pray that y'all, thou shouldest take them out of the world, but they shouldest keep them from evil, from the evil. They are not of the world, even though, even as I am not of the world. Well, we say we are not of the world, but God's not praying that he take us out of the world. He just want to keep us from the evil one. Look to the neighbor and say, he just want to keep you from evil. Uh, so what he's saying is, I already planted you behind enemy lines. I've already put you in a place where you need to be. You have to recognize that even though you're behind enemy lines, God is getting ready to heal you. He's getting ready to deliver you. He's getting ready to give you a breakthrough like never before. Sometimes you have to recognize that you've been placed there on purpose because you belong there. You wonder why you're still on that job. You've been trying to get fired. They won't fire you. You've been trying. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about. You've been wanting to say, I want you to fire me so I can get my unemployment. No, they're going to keep you there on purpose because your role hadn't been moved. That's your ministry. Stop acting like God, God didn't place you there on purpose. You keep trying to leave the job. They keep putting you in higher position. Why? Because that's your ministry, baby. That's where God put you. That is where you belong. That's why, that's why even though there might have been a six-year hiatus, you had to get back because that's where you belong. Your ministry is there. You ain't leaving till God says you got to go. Say, I'm behind enemy lines on purpose. Whenever God closed the door, he opened the door to the next one. If that next door not open, that means God has not closed that door yet. If y'all were looking for an out to leave your job, I just crushed, I just crushed your little heart. <laughs> Bless him heart. I had to because People have been talking to me. People have been ministering to me that they're ready to go. They, 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 they feel the unction of function outside of the workplace. And God has shown me, no, God has you behind enemy lines on purpose because uh, you have been called to do ministry where you at. Yeah. When it's smooth as silk leaving the door, that's when uh, it's time to go. But if you got to struggle... You got a challenge. You can't get fired even though you're doing, you've been late 10 times. That's because that's your ministry, baby. Point three, when you're behind enemy lines, it's your ministry. Look to the neighbor and say, it's my ministry. 
but, but preacher, I'm not even a preacher. I don't even get up and speak. I, 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 just, I just learn God. I, I, but it's your ministry, baby. Uh, 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 but but I, I'm a garbage man. What do you mean? It's your ministry, baby. Uh, uh, I, I, work at, uh, I work at Price Chopper. It's your ministry, baby. Uh, 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 I'm I, I just a part-time pizza delivery man. It's your ministry, baby. Wherever God has you at, it's your ministry. I, I don't ever talk to nobody, but you could talk to God by yourself. It's your ministry, baby. What I'm saying is there's a place where God has you behind enemy lines that is specifically your ministry. And if you don't have a job, that means there's a place in your family that's your ministry. Why? Because God don't want you idle. God wants you doing something. I, I'm going to talk to those that got big families here in the community. If you got a big family here in the community and all of them not saved, that means you're missing out on your ministry opportunity. I, I, I don't have a big family here. I have some family members here. But if, if I had 25, 30 family members living in the Kansas City area, I'd make sure, they not, might not have to come to my church, but I'd make sure every one of them saved. I'd be talking about God and tell them they was blue in the face. They'd be like, so tired of me, they won't invite me nowhere anymore. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, do, you, do we really want to call uh, Adam to the cookout? Uh, okay. And then I get there and they say, oh, that's why we didn't want to do it. Because I'm going to be like, well, Heavenly Father wants to save you. God wants to heal you. Your family wants to, I'd start preaching on them. They'd be like, oh, no, you got to go, preacher. I got to I got to the funeral uh, a couple a couple months ago, and they said, "Man, I didn't know you preached like that." because y'all don't. I said, "Y'all not on Facebook." They're all in New York. That's what I'm saying. But they're not here. I don't have it here exposure. But some of y'all got twenty, thirty, hundred family members right here in the community. You got to expose them to God. You behind enemy lines in your own family. You need to expose them to God. Look at it and say, I'm behind enemy lines. And you know what? You ever noticed the you ever, who's How many people saw the movie? It was about 1998 or 19, yeah, 1998 or so. Um, and even though he was out of communication with his ship, he knew where to go. How many people know that sometimes you, you're wondering what's going on in, in God, but you know where to go? You know where you should be? You know what you should be doing. You know what your orders are. You got the, you, everybody's planted behind enemy lines on purpose. Stand to your feet. I hear in the spirit that there's somebody here. That is behind enemy lines. Didn't know their role. Didn't know why they felt the way they felt. Why they struggled in their family. Struggled at, on the workplace. Struggled in their, in their wrestle with, you almost want to wrestle with God. Because you're trying to figure out why God do you have me there. I remember Habakkuk. Habakkuk. They were in captives. And Habakkuk said, why you got these evil people got us in captivity? So he got on the wall and he started asking God. And God responded. He said, write the vision, make it plain. So that those who see it can run with the vision. And then he said something real powerful in that text. He said, the vision will tarry, but it won't tarry long. And he said, the just shall live by faith. If you're trying to figure out what you're, you're like Habakkuk. And you're trying to figure out where God has you. Just come to the altar. We, we're going to do one altar prayer for those that are saying, why are they behind enemy lines? What's my role? Why can't I leave? Why am I going through what I'm going through? Where am I supposed to be?
And if you felt like this message cleared some things up for you, and you just want a, 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 a special touch, you come on down. God really showed some things today. Man, I was, this could be you. I, man, I was struggling to figure out what my position was at, at my corporation or at my job. And you found out the reason why I can't leave or the reason why I'm where I'm at is because that's where God has me. Strategically positioned me behind enemy lines. You wonder why, you wonder why the people that have acted up, they got, they got fired immediately. You don't show up, you're late, and you get promoted. Because you got favor, but also because God strategically placed you at that corporation or that company or that school or that job or that construction site so that you can make a difference. And for those that are unemployed, have you fulfilled your destiny? Have you ministered to your family like you should? Have you wondered why he, your family members seem to pop up every day or, and you talk to them on the phone or on Facebook, but you never really minister to them about God? If that's you, you need to come on. We're going to do one prayer. And if after that, then if for those that want to join or want to be part of this family or want a, a closer relationship with Jesus Christ because you know he's your Lord and Savior, you will do that as well. Everybody here at the altar, raise your hand. I want you to be in a position, remember I taught y'all to be in a position of receiving. Hands out. Say, Heavenly Father, I came to this altar with a knowledge that you have me behind enemy lines. And I recognize, God, that my position and my role is unique only to me. My doors are open, and because you opened them, those uh, opportunities that I thought I wanted, are shut because you shut them. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you for you in trusting me with this ministry. You've entrusted me with this position. You've entrusted me with this calling. I've been chosen for this behind enemy lines this undercover this role to do your glory to do, you, to do your work and I promise God to honor you in it I don't take this honor lightly I don't take this role lightly but I, God I inspect my job and I expect results. So, Heavenly Father, I bless you. I thank you. I expect a supernatural harvest for every seed I sow based on my position behind enemy lines.